I just got off the phone with a high ticket closer selling a $50,000 offer to investors and people that want to make passive income. And he was telling me that people get really wish-washy when he's trying to get them into the close and they want to look at contracts. They want to compare this against other offers. They want more information. They want to sleep on it, think about it, pray about it, eat about it, whatever it is. And he was struggling to get people to take action, which is probably what a lot of you and what all of us really experience when we're in sales is we find wish-washy customers that are like, yeah, just send me the contract and like, I'll look it over. When they're never really gonna look over that contract, they're never really gonna talk to their attorneys, they're never really gonna sleep on it. It doesn't even make sense. It's not like you're selling mattresses. Anyway, the point of this video is to give you three magic steps that if you put into your sales process, your sales pitch, regardless of what you really sell, will dramatically increase your ability to close customers because the close is a whole lot less about the close and objections as the beginning of your pitch and the middle of your pitch. And basically, the 90 90% of your sales process that comes before how soon would you like to do business with me when you walk into the close. So pay attention, listen up, take some notes, turn off your phone and dial in because I'm going to give you three magic steps that you can put into your sales process today to start making more money. The very first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to focus in on the discovery portion of your call. This is usually in the intro where you jump on a Zoom call or a phone call and you're like, hey, so like, where are you calling in from? Where are you Zooming in from? How's the weather? What's your day? And keep that short and tight. Nobody that's paying high ticket prices has a lot of time to sit and talk to you about your family dog or about your weekend or what you're doing next weekend. They don't really care and neither do you, quite frankly. You probably don't care about your customer's life either. What you want to do is sell them something. So make sure to take a little bit of time to get to know that person with some quick rapport building. I hate, hate the word rapport but it's necessary. Build a tiny little bit of rapport, but then jump into your process with some good discovery questions. Now, the thing that good discovery questions are gonna do, and by the way, if you're looking for an entire lesson just on discovery questions, go ahead and click the link wherever that is in this video to the other video so that you can learn all about discovery. But for our purposes right now, the things that you're gonna to wanna to identify, one, is my person that I'm on the phone with, are they actually qualified to purchase my product? The best way to do that is by asking them a little bit about their background, their work, what it is that they're trying to do if they have a budget for this or if they remember or saw the pricing on your website or application page or wherever you're kind of getting these customers in from. That's going to be number one. Number two is you're going to want to find out why somebody is actually looking at this opportunity and hoping to make a purchase with you today. It could be for passive income. It could be to solve a problem. And that is the only reason why people buy stuff is to solve a problem. So make sure you're asking questions and help identify what the real problem is that somebody's looking to solve for. If it's an investment opportunity and it's an ROI based product, make sure you figure out what they're going to do with that ROI or why they're looking for passive income. If you're selling a different type of product that actually solves a different problem, make sure that you're able to identify what those problems are because it will aid you in your sales process. And the last thing that you're gonna to wanna to do with your discovery questions is you are going to want to act curious. I was recently reading a book by Daniel H. Pink called To Sell is Human, I believe is what the book is called. My videographer can put the book right here and you can take a look at it. I'll even add some notes into the description so you can go and buy it. But essentially, Daniel H. Pink did a huge survey across either 1,000, maybe even 10,000 salespeople. And what he was trying to do is he was trying to figure out the number one trait of successful salespeople. And it wasn't confidence, it wasn't vocabulary, it wasn't handsome, good looks, it wasn't charm, it wasn't low prices, it was none of those things. The number one characteristic that the top performing salespeople have is curiosity. So when you're talking to your customer, I want you to have a little bit of a tone of interest, curiosity. For instance, if I jumped on the phone with you, regardless of what you sell, I would probably say, you know, hey, what do you sell? And you'd say, I sell solar, or I sell napkins or whatever. And I would be curious and say, you know, that's really cool. You know, it, it sounds like it could be kind of a tricky thing to do. What's the hardest part about your job? That's just a normal question, but I'm using my delivery to sound a little bit uncertain, a little bit curious, like I don't really know what's going on. And that's something that you can use in your discovery portion of the call to help pull out some additional information from your customers and help them lower their guard because now people are just answering questions without you sounding like you're walking them into some dark alley where you're gonna beat them over the head and take their money. Once you get through the discovery process of your call and you ask some good questions and you're able to identify exactly what problems your customer is looking to solve and why they're looking to solve those problems, then the second thing you're gonna to wanna to do right after that is what I call introducing price and asking the three 
things. And it goes a little bit like this. The one thing that I know that you and I both have in common, Mr. Customer, is the fact that neither of us have enough time to go through every single detail about this product, about this service, and about this offer. So I can make best use of your time. The thing I wanna do is I wanna remind you what the price is up front so that you can justify it as we go. Does that sound fair enough? That's exactly where your customer is gonna nod their head and they're gonna say, uh-huh, yeah, that sounds fair. In which case, continue on. You can say, I wanna let you know that this product is gonna be 50 grand or whatever your guys' pricing is. You can even give options, ballpark, or even a range if you're unspecific or don't know exactly what the pricing is going to be based on, you might need some feedback. But give people the price up front. I'm a huge fan of doing this, and the reason you're gonna wanna do this is one, is you're gonna get the jokers out of the deck. People that are unqualified and literally can't pay for your product, are you really gonna wanna sit around and talk to that person for 20, 30 minutes just to find out that they can't actually afford your product? I've done that and I've made that mistake many times in my life. I would recommend that you don't make that mistake. So give price up front so you can get the jokers out of the deck. And then also, the beautiful part about doing this and lean in a little bit, this is important, is you can follow up with the pricing by asking this. Now I'm not gonna say, Mr. Customer, that this is gonna be a perfect fit, that you'll fall in love with our product or that this will check all the boxes. But if you did fall in love with this product and it did solve some problems for you, I'm curious to find out what would be the one, two, maybe three things you would absolutely need to see, know, or hear from me today in order to feel comfortable making a decision like this today. The reason why this is such a beautiful question in the beginning of your sales process is that it takes the guesswork out of what you have to show your customer throughout the sales presentation for them to make sense out of doing something. They're gonna tell you, well, I need a guarantee or I need to see this or I need to make sure it differentiates from this other competitor that I talked to yesterday. Whatever it is, they're going to give you the bullet points of what you need to deliver in your sales pitch. And again, they're also verbally agreeing. This is the really tricky part. They're also verbally agreeing with you you, that if you were able to provide them with those one, two, maybe three pieces of information, that they would be confident in moving forward and making a decision, not next week or next month when they're busy thinking about it or talking to their spouse, but today. And that's when we want this deal. So framing the beginning of your pitch around discovery and then dropping the price and then asking your customer what would be the one, two, maybe three things you would absolutely need to see here today in order to make a confident decision will help you eliminate all the guesswork out of your sales pitch and will help put you in control of what you need to show your buyer. The third magic step that you're gonna put into your sales process, I could say is in the presentation, but I don't have enough time today to actually go into all of that. So make sure you like, and subscribe to this channel so that when I put out more information that's valuable and makes you more money, you don't miss it because you don't want to miss it. Anyway, the third thing that you're going to do is right before you get into the close and ask somebody when they would like to sign up or put down a deposit or pay or whatever that action item is for them to become a customer, you're going to want to introduce what I call next steps. The truth is, is that you're the salesperson. You sell your products and services every single day. When somebody decides to become a customer, you know exactly what happens next. Nancy, the onboarding girl, is gonna call them within 24 hours and then they're gonna get an automated email the next day to access this or whatever. They're gonna get scheduled for installation, blah, blah, blah. Whatever the next steps are, you know what those next steps are because you do it every day. Now that you're aware that you know what next steps are, it's important for you to understand that your customer doesn't know what those next steps are because they don't purchase your products every single day. They probably only purchase it maybe once, maybe twice, I don't know in their lifetime. And so the thing that you're gonna to wanna to do before you ask for the business is introduce next steps where you can have usually some type of slide or something for them to look at like day one, day two, day five, or a week later. Try to outline this visually for your customer if you can. It's very good for them to visualize the onboarding and customer journey. But at any rate, you're gonna to wanna to explain to this customer what to expect when they become a customer. So that you know that this really works, let me give you a quick story. Several years ago, I started my own CRM company. I wouldn't recommend that you do the same. It's a ridiculous industry to be in. It's very tricky, it's difficult, and it's very expensive. At any rate, I had a CRM, and I talked to business owners all the time. I showed them my CRM, all the features, advantages, and benefits, and I did a great job. And at the end of the call, every single business owner was like, dude, this is sick. My team would love this, and I love that about it, and blah, 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 blah. 
And like in the back of my head, I'm like, bro, this is gonna be the easiest like sale of my life. And every single time I asked for the business, they would shut me down. They would shut me down big time and they would give me objections, stalls, yeah, I don't know about right now, put this on the, the list for like six months or whatever. And I, I couldn't close anything, regardless of how good I was at selling and regardless of the fact that I was getting such good feedback about my product, nobody wanted to buy until I realized, dude, they probably have a lot of unanswered questions. For instance, as a business owner, if I'm looking to purchase a new CRM, I definitely wanna know one, how long is onboarding gonna take? Two, who's gonna transfer all the data from this CRM to this CRM? And by the way, three, it took seven years for my team to get familiar with Salesforce. How long is it gonna take me to actually get my team to use the new CRM? And by the way, who's gonna be in this role and how long is that gonna take? People had no idea. So when I asked them to switch CRMs, the reason why they never did business with me is they had no idea who was gonna be responsible for data migration and onboarding and training and yada yada. And then I had a bright idea. I decided to go into Canva. I went into Canva and I created one page that literally just had a documentation of, hey, you're gonna sign a contract today. You're gonna to put your black Amex card on that contract and we're gonna swipe that card for payment. Two, immediately afterwards, you're gonna get an email from my guy, Brandon. Brandon's gonna call you and figure out the best way to migrate that data, and then we're gonna handle that data migration. Based on how many people are in the CRM, it'll take about this long, and then we'll have a two week long onboarding period, and yada, yada, yada. Essentially, once I started introducing next steps with a one page sheet, my sales and closing ratio went from 0% to 63% literally overnight without me doing anything different other than introducing next steps. I share that story to give you some concrete evidence on the fact that if you're not introducing next steps and you're not telling your customer what's going to happen when they do decide to fork over all that money, sign a contract and become a customer, well then your customer, they're not gonna know what to say to you and they're just gonna give you some random objections. So introduce next steps, into the end of your sales process right before the close. And as soon as you're done introducing next steps, all you have to do is say, how soon would you like to get started? I think that if you implement these three magic steps into your sales process, you are gonna print money the legal way, make more sales, have more confidence, and ultimately sell more high ticket products to your customers. If you enjoyed this, go ahead and share this with somebody that you wanna see make more money and don't be selfish and comment, like, share, whatever it is on this video so that you can make sure that you're notified every single time that I drop some gold on YouTube.